Oh, he's doing a typical, you know, we miss you, love bomb kind of thing. Okay. You know, and he uh, just wanted to know how I was doing and all that. And he's Okay, so, so he's inquiring after your spiritual health, basically. And then you started to bring up some points of divergence between, you know, witness beliefs and, and, and Christian beliefs. Is that how it kind of accelerated? He brought up the memor the memorial, and um, you know, I just ended up telling him that um, that I felt it was a command to partake, and I do partake, and I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and all that. And um, I could tell he was kind of like taken back by me telling him that I partake, and so one thing led to another. Was, you know, I I told him that. Uh, I don't believe everything witnesses teach 100%. I just, it's impossible for me to believe that. And uh, I fear him, you know, finding out how I believe and that I don't believe 100% of what they teach. Uh, I fear that he'll, uh, you know, try to disfellowship me and take my family away from me and all that. And then did he say, well, well I'm not going to disfellowship you? or? Uh, he just kind of like uh, started talking about, you know, how... Well, we need you, you know, we need you to help us preach the good news of the kingdom to all the inhabited earth before the end comes because, you know, um, we're in this work. And he says, we're the only ones preaching the good news of the kingdom and we need you to, you know, associate with us and, 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 and be a part of that. And I told him, I said, well, the good news of the kingdom was uh, preached to the whole entire earth back then and the end came back then. You know, Jerusalem fell to so the generation that... Um, that Jesus was talking to about, you know, uh, not passing away were, were the people he was talking to right there, and they didn't pass away. You know, Jerusalem fell. I said, if there's another fulfillment to that, then, you know, I, I don't know about it. You know, and, he says, and he's like kind of rolling his eyes and that kind of thing, and um, I could tell he didn't like what he was hearing, and he mentioned that he thought I had apostate thinking, and so I said, you know, um, I said, that right there, that word apostate is uh, explained in the watchtower as, you know, the Greek meaning of the word, of the terminology means despicable fool. It's the same thing as saying despicable fool. I said, you want me to get, get, get you that article? And he goes, well, I'm not calling you despicable fool. I'm, I'm not calling you. I said, well, you called me an apostate. He goes, no, I'm not, I'm not calling you an apostate. I go, just because I don't think 100% the way witnesses think, you know, I'm, I'm you know, you know, a target for being disfellowshipped. And I don't, you know, I don't want to go through that. And then uh, he says, well, you know, you are a witness. And I said, well, you know what? I never committed myself ever to an organization or any man. I said, Jesus said, you have one leader, you know, and that's me. You have one teacher, that's me. I said, um, I never committed myself to any organization. I said, that's the new baptismal questions. And I never took those. And he kind of like, you know, looked at me through the side of his, you know. I think a lot of, a lot of the witnesses have no idea that the baptismal questions were changed. In, uh, he 19, might not have. In 1985, they, that's when they were changed. And, and we, you know, that, that information is easily accessible online if you Google it, if you search it. But, um, for a moment, can we revisit the, the comment um, or the section you guys talked about partaking? Because you had earlier told me, you said you thought everybody partaked, and then, and then you asked him, did anyone partake at the memorial? Oh, yeah. Back I, before I went to that point, he said, he, he, he kind of wanted to leave. And he said, Greg, I want to share something with you. And don't remind me to bring this, tell you what, answer your question. But before I get to that, I want to say, tell you why I said that. Absolutely. He, he said, uh, um, I want to share a thought with you before I leave. And he goes, no one can learn the truth by reading the Bible on their own. And I said, really? I said, where does it say that in your Bible? And I pointed to his Bible. Where does it say that in, your, in the Bible? So he opened it up to, uh, you know, Matthew talking about the faithful and discreet slave. I said, Matthew twenty four. Yeah, being, you know, giving the food at the proper giving the food at the proper time. And I said, Well, I said, that doesn't say what you said, that we can't find the truth, you know, reading the Bible on our own. So uh Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen says you can. 
Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, the yeah. man of God was, would be completely equipped for every good work. Right. Go I on. I wish that would have came to my my head, but it didn't. So, uh, so then I decided to ask him how many partook at his memorial, and he said zero, none. And I said, so why bother? I said, then why did you pass the wine and bread? Did you pass the wine and bread? He says, yeah. I said, so why'd you do that if no one's partaken? He says, well, that's what they did. That's what they did back then when when Jesus was uh, instituting this celebration. And I just kind of like, I didn't want to go there. I could have I could have said, well, yeah, and they all partook, right? <laughs> but, you know, it just, why? He got the point, you know, it just. And then I brought up, you know, Jesus said, unless you do this, you know, you have no life in you. And he says, well, that's only the anointed. You know, we're in the great crowd. So then I said, well, Chris, tell me this. Um, do you preach the heavenly hope or is that door closed? Is that door closed? Do you think it's closed? And he goes, no, it's not closed. Then, then why do you preach the earthly hope? And he didn't have any, anything to say. You know, it's kind of like, uh, he just kind of like bounced off, you know, brick wall well if i can make it just a brief inter interjection here what happens is when you go off the jw script when you when you if you want to talk about trinity or you want to talk about hellfire then they they're real comfortable because they know exactly what proof text to use but when all of a sudden when you start to ask them things they never thought about before and you go off the script that they had go by every time they're out in service or whatnot then they get confused you see and that's the curveball that you threw him because I know Chris and he he uh, knows all the proof text. He's very good at, at debunking Hellfire and Trinity and those sorts of things. But all of a sudden when you asked him real reasoning questions, you see then he was like he didn't know. Right. You know, and uh he brought up the faithful and discreet slave, you know, and I said, Well who is that? And he says, Well that's the anointed class. Well, how many of those? And he goes, well, so I don't know. And I said, well, isn't it like twelve or 13,000 or something like that now? I said, yeah, something like that. I go, but it, don't witnesses mostly view the governing body, the seven members, as the faithful and discreet slave? Aren't they the ones who, who uh, you know, give the food at the proper time, not the other, you know, 12,000? And he's kind of like, you know, yeah. I said, well, you know, what if those men are wrong? I mean, what if these men are, they're imperfect men? What if they're wrong? You know, what? What about the other 12,000? You didn't listen to them? You listen to them? And he just, you know, he, did, he didn't know what to say. So he just like. Well, no, you said earlier to me head. that he said, well, well, um, those oh, ones. Oh, they appointed. They the, appointed. They, yeah, they appointed. appointed the governing body. Yeah, that's what he said. And how did they do that? Did they vote? I told him they didn't appoint the governing body. That was, appoint, that was appointed through the corporation. And um, Ray, uh, was it uh, Freddie Fran Fred Franz was against that. Gave a whole talk before. Um, all the uh, Gilead, uh, Gilead graduates, yeah. In 1975. I said, you want me to send you a link to that talk? And he just like shook his head. How yeah. did it, how did it, did it, do you, at one point you said you wanted to share a scripture with him and he said, no, I'm not giving you my Bible? Right. What, how did that happen? I mean, how did that come up? That was right after I asked him, uh, so he sh read show some, me, show me yeah. where it says that that you can't learn the truth by reading the Bible yourself. And he read that scripture out of Matthew about the government, faithful and discreet slave. And I said, well, look, can I borrow your Bible? He says, no, no. And I'm like, oh, okay, you can share a scripture with me, but I can't share a scripture with you. And then uh, after a while, after a few times, I asked him uh, again, and he let me share a scripture. So I showed, I shared First uh, John two twenty six which says um, that, you you know, the anointing that in you is teaching you about all things and is true, and you do not need anyone teaching you, but the anointing that is in you teaches you all things. And I told him this goes hand-in-hand hand with other scriptures in the Bible about the Holy Spirit teaches us and Jesus Christ teaches us. We don't need, you know, uh, to be taught, you know, and he says, so you don't need to be taught by Paul, Apostle Paul? And I said, well, you know, the governing body didn't teach Apostle Paul, did they? I mean, Jesus didn't Jesus appear before Apostle Paul, and he he 
he uh, chose possible the Apostle Paul to in, to uh, go to the Gentiles. Had nothing to do with the governing body, did it? So you know that was kind of where we were at, kind of back and forth. Then uh, I said, "Have you read in Zechariah the last two chapters of Zechariah, where it talks about one third of the you know the earth being you know refined?" I said, "It." it so what a coincidence, uh, one-third of the world actually believe in Jesus Christ. And he didn't even really know what I was talking about. And uh, when Zacharias talks about, you know, one-third of the, the population, two-thirds of it being destroyed, uh, and one-third of it being brought through the fire and refined, I said, why can't the rest of these Christians who believe in Christ, the Bible says if you believe in Christ, you will be saved, you know? Uh, I, yes, I know Jesus said, I never knew you, but doesn't mean that they still can't be saved because if they believe in Christ, they still could be saved. So why can't they be refined just like Jehovah's Witnesses are being refined? You know, why can't God help, you know, and save all those who put faith in his son? Yeah, they, they believe, you know, in wrong teachings. They, but they're slowly coming out of what, you know, you view Babylon the Great as. You know, they're slowly becoming out of false religion. I also told him, you know, false religion hasn't, I mean, uh, Babylon the Great has not fallen yet. And he says, well, it's, it fell spiritually. What, 1914? He, I said, back then we were still celebrating Christmas and doing all kinds of things. But the light was getting brighter, he says. Okay, so the light's getting brighter for them, but the light can't get brighter for the rest of Christian Christianity. The light can't get brighter for... Um, all these other people who are who are, who are learning that the Trinity is false and that that you know Christmas and Halloween and all that stuff is wrong. Why is it only Jehovah's Witnesses the light can get brighter for? Light can't get brighter for nobody else. I didn't tell him that, but that's you know kind of what I was leaning towards. And well, uh, and if again, I got teary eyed and I told him, you know, Chris, I go, I just can't believe all these other people who believe in Christ that the light can't get brighter for them too, and. I, I turned around and walked off. And you know that scripture in Proverbs 4.18 that says, it says the path of the righteous one is like a bright light mm-hmm. that gets brighter and brighter. So it's referring to individual servants of God on their journey, on their uh, walk on the narrow narrow path that leads to life. It's not. It doesn't say the light of the organization is going to get brighter. Right. Well, Greg, I really appreciate you sharing, you know, what happened today in this conversation when you got visited by an elder. Um, on the surface, it appeared like he visited you because he cared about your well-being. But ultimately, do you really feel that that was why he visited you today? I mean, was it because he uh, you know, cared I, about you? I, or I, was I, it? I think that Chris cares about people, but ultimately, I think, you know, he, he's got his Jehovah's Witness hat on. He's got his elder cap on, you know, he's playing the part. I mean, if he really cared about me, why wouldn't he, you know, come over and say, hey, you know, I'm walking down the street. I thought, you'd see if you want to go walk on the beach, you know, or, or be a friend, you know. Mm-hmm. Why does he always have to come by, you know, and on a Saturday morning, drop off the magazines and have his, you know, his elder hat on? I, I've never been attracted to that. Anytime someone comes, comes by with their elder cap on and I'm like, yeah, okay, you know. I, I, I respect what they're doing because they think that they're doing what's right. But is that true love for me? Is that true Christianity when you're playing a role, you're playing a part, you know? They're sincere. and But, you know, uh, something that we've told um, folks in, in, in the Jehovah Witness ministry before is we say, well, is sincerity enough? Sincerity alone, is that enough? And the answer, the witness answer always is no. And they use Matthew 7. 21 or 2020 where he says, you know, um, get away from me. I never knew you, you workers of lawlessness. So they use that. So here you have it, the exact same thing when you turn it around. Is sincerity alone, is that enough? Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Only, only Jesus is the judge. So after he left, you went upstairs and you got out a copy of the New World Translation and you started to just sort of flip. I was feeling shaky. I wasn't flipping. No, I just opened the Bible and looked straight down and this is where I landed. Uh, Acts chapter 18, verse 9. I honestly felt like Jesus was talking to me. You know, it could be a coincidence, maybe not, but this, these words really apply. Moreover, by night, the Lord said to Paul through a vision, 
Have no fear, but keep on speaking and do not keep silent, because I am with you and no man will assault you so as to do you injury. See, I felt like he was going to do me injury, and here Jesus is saying, they're not going to do you injury. Um, for I have many people in this city. And and so that made me think, you know, here I am thinking that, you know, me and you are the only ones that are, you know, enlightened as far as what witnesses believe. You know, we're me and you are the only ones that are, like, coming to, a, you know, to grips with, with uh, true Christianity and, and partaking now. But yet here it says, um, I have many in this city. Maybe Paul felt that way. Maybe Paul felt like he was the only one that, you know, was coming to grips, you know, and and uh, Jesus is saying, hey, I, I have many people in this city. Yeah, well, it reminds me, too, of what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4. Oh, here it is. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 3 says, Now to me it is a very trivial matter that I should be examined by you or by a human tribunal. Even I do not examine myself, for I am not conscious of anything against myself. In other words, we're just trying to follow Christ. We're trying to follow the scriptures. We're not conscious of anything we're doing wrong. We're just trying to do what's right and follow our conscience, our Christian conscience. And then Paul goes on, he says, Yet by this I am not proved righteous, but he that examines me is the Lord, or Jehovah in the New World Translation, but it was the Lord in the, you know, in the original Greek. Hence, do not judge anything before the due time until the Lord comes, who will both bring the secret things of darkness to light and make the counsels of the hearts manifest, and then each one will have his praise come to him from God. So we each stand before the judge, Christ, and he's the only one that examines us. The Lord examines us. But at either rate, and then verse 6, he says, do not go, go on beyond the things that are written. Yeah, that's a good point. You asked, you asked this, this elder earlier in your conversation, you said to him, well, where does it say that we have to have anything more than the Bible? So to me, that's an example of going beyond the things that are written. Because just because you read a scripture in Matthew 24 that's unrelated, that's talking about stewardship, about who is the faithful steward, you know, is how it's the parallel account is worded in Luke. That has nothing to do with what you said, and then you called him on that. So now what's Paul got to do? He's got to go find the Christians. He's got to go find those people. Because there's Jesus. And maybe many. that's where I'm at. Maybe that's where I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, with you, and, you know, we're, we're like, you know, talking to each other. But have we started going to find the rest of the Christians? Well, I, I haven't because of the fear of them. Because of fear of, of, of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Fear of disfellowshipping, disfellowshipping the shunning yeah. process. That's... Right. The order is rapidly fading for the time. 